Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. This is Diane Fodell. Thank you for joining our Cognitive Systems Institute speaker series today. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Yan Song Fang, who is an assistant professor in the Institute of Computer Science and Technology at Peking University. And he's joining us today at 11.30 at night, his time from China. Dr. Fang is affiliated with the group of Web Information Processing. Before that, he worked with Professor Morella Lapata and obtained his PhD from the School of Informatics at the University of Edinburgh. Prior to Edinburgh, he worked with Professor Zhu Fu Fang on pattern recognition at Peking University. His current research interests include using probabilistic methods to extract knowledge from natural language text, to understand unstructured natural language text, and to support intelligent human computer interfaces such as question answering and dialogue. Yan Song has published over 30 papers in top refereed international journals and conferences, and today he is going to talk to us about building a cognitive system to fight the National Ch College Admission Challenge. So Yan, Fong, Yan Song, let me turn it over to you, and um, we'll open up for questions at the end. Thank you for being okay. here. Thank you, Diane. So hello everyone. Good morning, or for some other colleagues, it should be good good evening. So today I'm really happy to share you with with our work on uh, building a cognitive systems fight for national college admission challenge. So this is actually joint work with my uh, students Kun Xu, my colleague Song Fang Huang from IBM China Research Lab, and Dong Yan Zhao from Peking University. Okay, so uh, so as as all of us know that currently artificial intelligence is really a hot topic in in both academia or industry, and uh, one of the one of the actually hottest topics in, in artificial intelligence research is that to pass the, one of the exams in uh, educational kind of institutions. For example, in Japan, there's a pro project called Today Robot Project. So, which is organized by National Institute of Informatics, and it's actually uh, collaborators from both universities and other research institutions in, in Japan. And their aim is to pass the National Center test for university admissions. And also their final goal is to enter the University of Tokyo, which is also the name of the project comes from. Uh, to die is a Japanese kind of saying for university to die. And similarly, in in, in U.S., there are actually another uh, similar project called Aristotle and, and Euclid, which is organized by Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence. And these projects focusing on elementary school and high school topics in both science and math and also for geometry. And actually, in China, uh, we have a, a, a very similar kind of a test called Gaokao, in, and which is actually the national college entrance examination. So you know, in Chinese, we, in China, we actually have nine subjects for the for the entrance examination, and every year there are over nine million students attending this examination. So the projects in China actually, uh, which is launched in 2015, which is last year. And the purpose of the project is to promote risk in artificial intelligence and also related subjects like uh, information retrieval and also database management or natural language processing and also mathematics research from the computer science community. And the team consisting over 20 national research institutes, universities, and also some companies. And so the final goal of the project is to pass the, the real kind of national college entrance examinations. Uh, currently, we are focusing on the, the, the tests from the Beijing district. So there are actually four subjects uh, involved in this challenge. So, which means that we are going to tackle with Chinese, history, math, and geography. And, well, actually, our kind of group was involved in the, uh, in the small team focusing for the ge geography subject. 
So just give you an, an impression of what kind of tests we're going to facing. Uh, so this is one of the uh, very basic t uh, kind of uh, tests from, from from the Beijing kind of uh, uh, geography examinations. So the the question is, what is the correct ranking of the provinces according to their average altitudes from highest ha to lowest? And the the, can the four candidates are actually the short names for the provinces in, in China. So to answer such a kind of questions, you are going to collect some knowledge. Like you should know the, the short names for provinces, and you have to collect average altitudes of those kind of provinces. So just, here I just uh, give you the full name of the provinces according to the short names. So that that could be the the kind of a structural knowledge base uh, comes from. And also you have to do some reasoning. For example, you might uh, you might just forgot some of the uh, the information about the provinces. For example, you you uh, you might just don't know what exactly the average altitudes of the certain kind of provinces, and you have to do some reasoning. Uh, for example, you, you you might just have a guess or inference according to some background knowledge. Uh, which may be in the form of a relative comparisons of a province's altitudes. For example, uh, we might just guess Hunan province is in the east part of the China, and the Ningxia province is in the west, part, west uh, region of China. And usually the provinces in, in, in western part of China has a higher kind of average altitude compared to the, the eastern parts. And the last one, you have to do the ranking. So it seems that the, the, the kind of task, this is not very difficult. But actually, this is a very basic one. Uh, see the, the next one. So this one is a kind of a common form for the geography subjects in national entrance exams, examinations. So uh, from the questions, we have some background information, like Missouri River Valley is an important agricultural area of the United States. And the area figure one shows the winter of the Missouri River, where the white part is the snow. So this is just the background for the questions. So the first uh, sub-question is that why is the farmland on the peninsula shaped as circular? So just look at the right bottom corner of the slides, and you will see uh, several kind of a small white circles. So that is the subject asked in the questions. So you have to choose from the four uh, candidates, like their watering approach, or uh, because of their of their terrain, or because their farming approach, or, or just you have to you might just guess it's because like for farmland. So in this case, you you have to read the graph and you have to read the background information and find kind of related information from the your your own kind of a knowledge base. And also you have the second sub question. Could you have a guess what is the main crop in this area? And you have to choose from four candidates. So that is very kind of difficult for especially uh, for students who, who never been to U United States and you have no idea where Missouri states uh, located in, in, in the country. So, uh, in terms of the knowledge required for for passing passing the the entrance examinations, you have to collect various knowledge. For example, you have to know every stuff. You have to know the climate, the longitude and latitudes, and also you have to understand the maps or some figures, backgrounds or, or images. And you, you, based on those kind of basic knowledge, you have to. You have to perform kind of uh, reasoning. For example, you have to recognize relationship among those factors and find an analogies. In the case that you might just forgot something uh, in your background information, or sometimes you have to perform reasoning according to common sense knowledge. That is actually an important part in, in the real kind of entrance examinations. So that is actually make the things challenging. And it, to, in order to pass such kind of uh, information, you have to uh, collect solid knowledge. 
uh, which is actually every aspect about the syllabus in, in the texture books. And you have to build up a math system which could do the basic kind of a mathematical uh, inference. And the third part will be the reasoning parts, which is actually the most challenging parts uh, involved in the system. So the first one is uh, you, you have to you have to actually perform the logical inference, and you have to make up use the common sense knowledge, and sometimes you have to do the texture entailments uh, from kind of, kind of different sources of knowledge. So this is actually uh, in, in, impractical in, in our implementation. So the, every, the very first starting point, which is, uh, which is kind of the starting point for our own work, is to implement an un the, a question answering system which will focus on simple factoid questions. And our kind of a source will be the knowledge base. So in order to do that, we can have different kind of choices. So one of the basic one is to use information retrieval based question answering system, which has been researched in the natural language uh, processing and the information retrieval communities. And also we can choose from the we can choose from the, the question answering systems using structure knowledge base or we can build a, a slightly complex system using structure and unstructured knowledge bases. So the main topics of today's my, my talk. Okay. So next, you, you will see what is the main kind of paradigm for the task. Um, given the kind of strange questions, and our system will try to convert the questions into a structured query, like the medium parts of the, um, the, the slides. And also, next, we will, we will query those kind of structured queries that call, uh, against the structured knowledge base, like Freebase or DBpedia, and which will return the final answers. Um, so the task is to answer natural language questions against the structure knowledge base. And there are actually se several pre previous work in, in, in both information retrieval community and natural language pro processing community. And you could choose from semantic parsing based methods or information extraction methods. Or you can try deep learning based methods. So today I've just to talk about the semantic parsing based and the information extraction based uh, models. Uh, so um, so uh, one of the uh, one of the challenges. To, to build as many parsing based models is you have to convert the natural language questions, questions into proper meaning representation. And also the next one will be ground the kind of structured meaning representations into a, a database query, which can be used to query a structured knowledge base. So previously, uh, the work in both in, in IR and NLP community are just to have some shortcomings like the search search space is very huge and it's really difficult to adapt to to multiple knowledge base, and which makes it quite challenging to to build an actually workable systems. So that will be our main kind of starting point. So uh, our work starting from to 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 represent the natural language questions in the knowledge and knowledge base independent kind of meaning representations like the examples in, in the slides. So we we segment the natural language questions into different parts and try to recognize the structures among different parts of the questions. And next we uh, sorry, this is a bit slow. Uh, so next one, we have we will separate the meaning representation uh, meaning representations and instantiations with a certain knowledge base, which means that we can instantiate our, our meaning representations according to different knowledge base. So just like the examples, we can do with free base, we can also do with DBpedia, or sometimes multi multilingual database is also possible. 
So the framework works work just like this one. So given a sent given a natural object sentence, and we we do the parsing first, and we got the structures representations in terms of the meaning of the questions, and we do instantiation, and we got structural query. So next one, we have the actual parsing model. Uh, build it like a, a phrase dependency graph parsing framework, which means that we have some nodes and we have the edges. The nodes will represent the, the, the different kind of a semantic phrase, like entities, categories, or variables and relations. And we, we have the natural language question as the input, and we output the phrase dependency graph uh, from the parsing model. So for the instantiation, we using some rules to can phrase dependence graph into structural queries and do the instantiation according to a given kind of knowledge base. So here are the rules to convert the, the phrase dependence graph into structural queries. And next one is a probabilistic model to, to do the instantiation with a certain knowledge base, which basically is a relation extraction model which means that we have to map a phrase of natural languages into a, a predicate in the knowledge base. For example, in a, the director of the phrase of director of will be mapped into DBPD predicate director. So here we got we can use a co-occurrence to build up the probabilistic model. So such kind of a quite simple question of system will get very nice results on the um, structure knowledge base. So our system actually participate two com computations, CLEAF, QALD, four and five, and our system just ranked first in both computations. And our system is quite nice, and it's um, easily to adapt it to longer or complex synthesis, and it's quite efficient, around uh, 0.3 seconds per sentence. And also, they have consistent performances on different data sets with different knowledge base. So further, we uh, we extend our work to to kind of uh, to um, uh, to kind of handle with uh, slightly complex uh, representations. For example, you know, in, in natural language processing. Uh, Substantive expressions is quite difficult to form to form formally analyzed. Uh, for example, mayor is the longest river in the world. So how to formally represent such kind of a sentence is quite difficult. So in, in our attempt, we we try to understand the substantive expressions in four aspects. So first, we will find the target and also find the comparison set. Um, the comparison set against the target, and also we will uh, mapping the comparison dimension with a predicate in, in, in the knowledge base. Um, just like the examples, we will, uh, we will map the, the longest into a predicate into the uh, in, in the structure knowledge base, like the free bay uh, predicates, geography, river, lands. And we also have to recognize the ranking of the comparisons. So here, in the example, we, we, we have to rank our candidates in a descending order, right? So this is one in improvement. And the next one will be, uh, sorry. So, so the next one will be to, to understand the natural language questions in a relatively simple way. Sometimes we will see the even the questions in the in the national entrance exams that are not very long, and sometimes most of the questions are just uh, less than 20 words, and most of them they have only two or one entities from the knowledge base, and they have some categories, just like the example who does Michael Kilton play in cards. Uh, so here we you only have two entities, Michael Kilton and cards. So to deal with such kind of cases, you can uh, we can just using a, an entity linking with relation extraction framework to tackle such kind of questions, and we jointly perform 
anti-linking and relation extractions, which will give uh, about 0.49 F1 score on the benchmark data sets. And to actually uh, deal with a slightly complex questions like what should a visitor see in Germany? So here the right parts of the sentence is, is, is quite difficult to formally map in a structured knowledge base because never a, a knowledge base will, will include a predicate saying uh, visitor should say. So, uh, but the blue part, Germany is still part of this structured knowledge base. So similar questions so you will see like the next one. So what is the most popular crop during 1900 in, in USA? So again, the blue parts could be formally uh, mapped into structured knowledge base, but right parts are some kind of uh, subject expressions. So similarly, you, you will see the more kind of examples in, in, in our question answering kind of a benchmark data sets. So to, to tackle such kind of cases, uh, which are either subjective or hard to map against the structured knowledge base. And we build up a, a, a framework to kind of accommodate hybrid knowledge resources to answer such a kind of questions, which means that are not only using structured knowledge base like FreeBase DBpedia, we also using Wikipedia texts or some community question answering archives. So here's a framework which means that we are still using an anti-linking and relation extraction kind of a framework to use knowledge base to first find the can be answers, and then we use text resources to re-rank the, the candidate answers, and then you find the, the, the best one as the final answers. Uh, next one, sorry, it's a, little bit, a little bit slow in my side. I can't see. So, um, just to uh, sorry, two. So, besides one, I, I just show you with uh, a text resources, the kind of evidence to re rank the candidate answers. You, we can also build up a new kind of a framework to, to accommodate the hybrid knowledge based resources. For example, we can use one knowledge base to do the entity linking, and we can use different knowledge resources to do the uh, the relation extraction step, which means uh, just like the example sentence, who is the frontman of a band of the band that wrote coffee and TV. So uh, from the point of view of human, we have to do the first uh, one to recognize the the frontman as the predicate in the knowledge base, and the coffee and TV is an entity, and the band is also a category in the knowledge base. And we can use different resources to, to analyze the sentence. Like we can map coffee and TV according to the knowledge base entity linking, and we can use uh, the, structure, the textual resources to recognize the frontman and finally, we have a joint inference step to combine different resources of the uh, of the answers, and then we give the final one. So in in this case, we have tried uh, on many kinds of uh, knowledge base. If you use single resource, you will not be able to find the final answers. Okay. Okay. So. Um, at this point, actually, we, we are still a lot to, to do for the national exams. And uh, I, I didn't put the actual answers here, but actually we can only got 35% uh, correct answers for multiple choice uh, in the subject of geography. But anyway, we, we still got a flexible question answering framework which can combine multiple resources like structured knowledge base and also uh, textual resources like Wikipedia or textual books or exercise from the schools or the universities and even newspapers, which is actually one of the source for, for the national entrance exams. So you, you will always see some new stuff from the each year's kind of uh, tests. And um, this is also uh, one of the achievements from our collaborations with IBM China Research Lab and, and 
we, we, we built such kind of uh, a question answering framework which contribute to the, to the Watson computations and we also, which is also contribute to a multimodal question answering system uh, in the domain of uh, tourism to help tourists to better kind of experience in the point of uh, places of interest. The piece of the framework is to, uh, first one is to from to, to perform the mapping or kind of conversion from natural, natural languages to a structured knowledge base. So this is actually what we're currently working on uh, using deep learning based models. And also, um, so the next one will be, you have to deal with the inference over structured knowledge base. For example, you have to do the, uh, uh, the ranking according to a, a specific knowledge base predicates, which is qu actually quite difficult to analyze. And also uh, to answer common sense, kind of common sense, uh, uh, that's too fast. So to answer uh, questions using common sense knowledge, which is still currently missing in, in our framework. And uh, one of the extra stuff is to understand various kind of images, tables, figures, or diagrams, uh, which we have to get help from the computer vision community. Okay. Thank so you, Yen Fong. All of my um, talk. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to invite the audience to press star mute on your line, or I'm sorry, star one to unmute your line and ask questions. Okay. Yan Fung, thank you very much. This is Scott McLeod uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, this is fascinating, uh, especially uh, with admissions questions um, and translation uh, and these remarkable databases. Uh, have you engaged translation processes um, between, say, Chinese and Japanese? And in developing world university and school, a uh, project I'm working on around MIT OpenCourseWare in seven languages, um, how would you structure databases uh, such as you're working on for translation for um, kind of admissions approach, approaches. Your, your talk was so broad, it's hard to focus a question. Uh, oh, actually, currently, um, we, we build up a, 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 a kind of a flexible framework to, 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 um, to understand, actually, the natural language questions given multiple kind of uh, knowledge bases. So for the national entrance exams work, we are focused on Chinese using the Chinese knowledge base, which we collected from multiple kind of online resources like the Chinese parts of the Wikipedia or uh, the Baiku Encyclopedia from Baidu and also other resources. And we combine them together. So within each kind of a framework, we're using only one source, one languages. So there are no translation issues among them which is actually are currently uh, working on to use multiple resources from different languages. Great, thank you. I hope to follow up an email. Thank you very much. Sure, sure. Please. Thank you. Is there another quick question? For hi, this is, yeah, hi, this is Jim Sporer. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I was very amazed that the uh, <laughs> Accuracy was around 70% just off the co-occurrences, uh, training up the probabilities with co-occurrences in that one part of your presentation. That, that was surprising and impressive. wonder if you could say anything more about um, how, how to improve it beyond 70%. Uh, uh, so uh, actually we use co-occurrences from more resources than you can, you can imagine. Give, uh, Sorry, um, we, we use more resources compared to others, I think, using the same resources because we collected more kind of uh, textual resources and also some paraphrase resources from uh, LDC Institute. I think, uh, I think you know the, the LDC, right? So we collected paraphrase kind of uh, uh, representations from that resources, which really gives you improvement 
uh, or just using free, uh, just using Wikipedia. That is not not enough for for collecting and for mapping statistics um, yet. And okay. I, actually, in, in our follow up work, if you use deep learning, deep learning based models, you, you can use noisy training data, which means you can use much larger uh, size of the da training data to to further improve your model. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. We're out of time, but Yan Song, thank you so much for doing this presentation, especially so late at night. Um, this was excellent. You, you have a lofty goal of the National uh, College Admission Exam. It's almost like Jeopardy. Um, good luck with your future research, and thank you, audience, for participating. Um, we will see you next week. Thank, thank you. Yan thank you, Diane. Thank you. Thank you.